It's like having a deal with Range Rover or the equivalent. If you, that is a stamp of approval that says, if they believe in it, everybody believes in it. So that's one of the reasons we work with them, because it completely le legitimizes what we're doing. They will not do a deal with somebody that it's not absolutely proven that it works. So now that we got these, uh, we've proved it, and we have these power agreements in place, the next thing we needed to do was go find locations to put our system. So first I'm going to go back and kind of explain exactly how our system works. Okay, you know that it's a refrigerator in reverse that creates electricity. But what we do is we take heat from any source, really, and it's a low-grade heat. Now, heat, you can say, well, that's nuclear power or steam power, but we do it at a very low temperature, just a couple degrees above water's boiling point, and this is under pressure. So we're talking about 224 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe you guys use Fahrenheit, too, or do you use Celsius? Celsius. So it's at 100 and to Celsius, I guess, something like that. Uh, so we're capturing that heat, and with, uh, with all this work that Mr. Horn did, and fluid dynamics and, and uh, efficiency of systems, that heat, when it's under pressure, converts into a gas. That gas turns a turbine, which then powers the generator. And all of this stuff is so finely tuned, monitored by software, that the temperature range in that liquid doesn't even fluctuate a degree. It's that exact. So the heat goes through, turns into a gas, turns the turbine, which powers the generator, then it goes back into a cooling uh, tower, which takes the rest of the heat out, it turns back into a liquid. A liquid. This is a completely hermetically sealed system. So no refrigerant ever comes out, nothing is ever burned in our system. We're capturing heat from something else. Now I can show you a diagram here to give you an idea of what it looks like. One of the number one places that we're doing this are on landfill sites. Now as you know, landfills, they, they can be uh, a couple square miles. When they build them, it's just a huge trash heap. They throw these big tarps over the top of it, and they have little vents, and constantly methane gas is just coming out of them. They have pipes that go all through the system, and it channels over to, say, a building like this, which in this building they use old submarine engines, old diesel engines, and they convert them to run on natural gas. So all the gas that comes in here is relatively clean and can run in an engine. All the other dirtier gas gets burned in what's called an underground flare. Because you can't release it into the atmosphere because it's horrible effects on the, the, you know, the, the atmosphere. So that dirty gas is untouched. The clean gas runs these generators. Now they've been doing this for uh, you know, dozens of years, so this is nothing new. But one thing that gets wasted in this process are these big, get a better picture here. The big mufflers, and these are the mufflers for the engines. So what we do is we wrap a heat exchanger around there. Big blanket, like a radiator, captures this excess heat, which it comes out at like 800 degrees, and we take out about 300 degrees at that temperature. We also take the, the jacket water that runs through the engine, just like your radiator system in a car, and we use that heat as well. So now, what comes out of these engines is less heat because we're capturing it and putting it in our process. Now, the benefit also to these engines is a better life because an, an engine runs, temperatures go up and down just like your car. With our system, we are completely <coughs> keeping this engine running at a constant level temperature. So it actually increases the engine life of these uh, power sources. So now we're, uh, we're capturing the heat from the exhaust. We're taking it from the engine, we're running it through our process, and we're making, on that specific system, that's 150 kilowatts of power. There'll be several of these sites at every landfill. Uh, right now, what they have are power purchase agreements. This is Pacific Gas and Electric, and we have our bureaucracies in the United States, uh, just like every country does. Uh, unfortunately, they only offer a 1.5 
megawatt power purchase agreement. That's the maximum they're doing for smaller companies like us, which we're happy to get. We've got six of them in place, which is nine megawatts of power, which is still substantial. Uh, but the good news is there's ground flares I was talking about that right now is just wasted heat. Not the, not the flame you see up in the air, but it burns underground. And so it's just this big heat stack that just heat goes up in the air. Now very soon, probably in the next year or hopefully sooner if we can push it, there's going to be an additional 10 megawatts of power that we can tap into at each one of these sites. Because our heat exchanger doesn't care if it's a muffler, it doesn't care if it's the internal engine, it doesn't care if it's the sun, it just cares that we get the BTUs and the power to go up to that 224 degrees Fahrenheit. So even though uh, these contracts are significant, they're only going to get better and they're only going to get bigger. And that's, uh, to me, that's a big key. And it's even more efficient. Uh, at one and a half megawatts, we're building uh, systems that could be tiered 150 kilowatts each. So maybe we have 10 150 kilowatt systems. But the bigger the system gets, the more cost effective it gets. At this smaller scale of 150 kilowatts, uh, our cost can be about $2,500 per kilowatt. And uh, you can cut that in half if you want to think of it in pounds. And uh, when you go up to these larger scales of one megawatt plus, the cost can go down to $1,500 per kilowatt. So it all, it all varies in tiers and the price gets better as it gets bigger. So that explains uh, the technology for the most part. Not I'll ask questions, or you can ask questions as I go along. Does anyone have any questions about how the technology works? Got it pretty clear? Okay. Now, uh, could so... You, could, you, could you tap into the heat from the sun? Sure. That, I'll, I'll touch on that right now then. The, the heat from the sun, our technology is also a solar technology. And we're working with a company right now. We're trying to work out some details with them. They are not our company. We don't own them. But we would actually like to acquire them. And their technology is very best used with ours. So rather than launching it right now and taking them along for the ride, we would like to acquire them first. So we own them as they're going for the ride and we can participate in the building of their <coughs> company. But what they do is they create a solar concentrating panel. Now this isn't something you're going to put on the roof of your house, but in applications where you're trying to create a lot of electricity for the grid. You're familiar with these projects where they buy uh, you know, 100 acres of land or a few square kilometers of land and, and then they lay out photovoltaic cells or they have other options. What we do with this solar concentrating panel, it's a lot like a Venetian blind up there. Rather than a trough, a mirror that's very expensive to make, this technology is a flat panel with a Venetian blind type mirror, and it changes throughout the day for the sun. On top of that is a pipe with the coolant, the coolant that, or the refrigerant that we use that operates our system. When the sun hits it, it heats this pipe and this liquid, and then it runs through our system and operates like that. Now the good news is that when we build one of these types of facilities, our costs are half of what photovoltaic cells are. Uh, the, if there is bad news to it, it's right now we have contracts ready to go, actually large scale ones with uh, builders, big builders in the United States, but they don't have the means to mass produce these solar concentrating panels right now. So we're looking to accomplish this over the next year period. Now, our system, what we're doing on landfills, is about a quarter of that cost. So naturally, it makes sense for us to stick with these landfill applications where we're making more money, it's less cost, we have the contracts in place. Now, where it comes into benefit with solar, solar is wonderful. We're not burning anything, but they're still burning methane for us to get this gas. If we're just capturing it from the sun, that's heat that's going to hit the earth one way or the other and heat it up. If we can convert it to usable electricity, then that's a good thing. So there's lots of benefits and 
uh, government incentives and various things to make solar power viable. Also, you, can, uh, you don't have to have a landfill. If you have a big desert, you probably don't have a landfill out in the middle of the desert to create power. So it makes a lot of sense to put a solar field. We're actually working on some projects now to uh, acquire some land, and we're going to uh, start exploring that and doing it on a smaller scale first. So that's, that's how the sun taps into it.